I don't hear you. Do you hear me? I can hear yeah, you. Can. Who is this? We hear you, Frank. Frank, yes, we hear you. Um, Victoria, could you let me know who's there in person? Okay, in person we have um, Karen Ann Harlow's, Wayne Harlow's, Kyle Fury, Blake Huber, David Atkin, John Gershman, Laurel Eimer, and Weston Eimer, and Bruce Griffith. If you'd find us anywhere to sit, I don't really care. Um, okay, thanks. Okay. And before we start, I would like to address the tragic shooting which took place in Denver on Saturday. This tragedy should have, you could go ahead and record it, it's fine. Um, but at the very beginning of the meeting, I would like to address the tragic shooting that happened in Denver on Saturday. This tragedy should have never taken place. One man's life was lost, another man's life was completely shattered. Over what, Mace? As chairman of the Libertarian Party of Colorado, I say that we ache deeply over this senseless tragedy. Our hearts go out to both of the families, the victim of the shooting and the family of the shooter. The tragedy should have never happened. We pray that the shooting will serve as a wake up call to our community so that something this horrible will never happen again. In August, I made a video and I gave a speech and I warned Democrats and Republicans that their political rhetoric had become so abusive that it was traumatizing Americans. In this video, I said the sound was interesting. I said sound can be very intimidating if someone is screaming while standing in front of you, but not so much if it were a mile away. I said, you can't hear them from a mile away. Tragically, we saw this analogy take place in real time last Saturday. I know how I wish that both of the men involved in this shooting would have been a mile away from each other. Life for them, well, for one of them it ended and for their loved ones will be so different today. I said the sound lowers the further that we are from the source and I said that as libertarians, we have given ourselves permission to walk away from the screaming. That in silence, we have heard something else. We have heard dog whistles from both the left and the right. And I said that we have listened as their lust for power has polarized families and destroyed lifetime friendships. America, please wake up. We have learned that the media have been bringing unvetted, undercovered, armed security guards to them to cover news stories. This should give us all a pause. Has the media been fanning the flames of political discourse all along? Has the media been waiting for this moment so they could capture all this on film? You know, in 1976, there was a movie called Network. It was released, it was about a fictional television network that was struggling with poor ratings. And the network executives successfully plotted to kill someone on air for ratings. Does this sound far-fetched? Yeah, maybe. But fast forward to October 12, 2020. It's 48 hours after the tragic shooting in Denver, a shooting for which media outlet was 100% responsible. Yet there is no reflection for what they have done on any of the major cable networks. No, just the opposite. You turn on CNN, MSNBC, and Fox today, in October 12, 2020, you'll see partisan hate spill out, much like the blood in Denver sidewalk spilled out on Saturday. There is a saying, you cannot be kind, be quiet. But in the media, there's a different saying, if it bleeds, it leads. This is not about politics. On Saturday, the media showed us its true colors. They are a gang and like a gang, they are soliciting members, whether that you are red or whether you are blue. America. Pick your gang and swear your oath. As a, a libertarian, we reject the media blood oaths 
And I ask you to say with me again, ya basta, enough already. Democrats and Republicans, libertarians beg you to walk away from the seductive siren call of the media and break the chains of their influence. They do not have America's best interest at heart. Please do not let them kill any more Americans using your influence. Last Saturday, libertarians were cleaning up a roadside. The weekend before that, they were hosting a non-political family day at a corn maze, a wine tasting. Um, Democrats and Republicans, have you forgotten but that this is what we as political parties do? Gangs fight and kill each other in the streets. In America, political parties don't do that. In Ecuador, they do. Here, they don't. Or they didn't, anyway. When, when did Republicans and Democrats start acting like gangs? And when did the media become cheerleaders for this behavior? We beg our political brothers and sisters in Colorado to join the libertarians and stop the senseless partisan war, not through hate, but through kindness, not through anger, but through understanding. Trust each other. These people are your family, your friends, and your neighbors. We have to trust that America was built on a strong foundation, and we have to trust people who live in Colorado. Please stop listening to the media. Kindness, tolerance, and understanding is at the top of all of our libertarian values, not our political affiliation. We ask the duopoly, the Democrats and Republicans to follow our example. As we enter into the final weeks of the 2020 election, may everyone's speech be kind, may everyone's actions be tolerant, may everyone's heart be understanding. Thank you. Now, um, let's start with our program. I took this time, I'm sorry, I shouldn't, I should have asked for permission first, I'm not sure, but I think it's important to, to point out what happened and to give our condolences to both of the families. We were there. We were, we were both there, and and we were. I was an eyewitness. She was in the middle of an interview. Her face has been plastered on Fox and CNN and everywhere you look. That footage that they're showing from Denver Seven is her in the middle of an interview, and I I watched the entire thing happen. And That's, it's, it's so I, I am so sorry you had to see that. Take Tegan was just on Tucker Carlson um, tonight talking about the incident. So wow. it's finally starting to get the coverage it deserves. Let's well, just hope it thank stays you. that way. Okay, let's start with the agenda. Um, let me get over to the agenda. And if I am drive, I think the first item of business is read the agenda and approve. Has everybody read the agenda and the board? Um, is there any opposition to approving the agenda as is? Any corrections? Okay. Uh, we have we have some um, guests here. Uh, they they will be allowed three minutes each. Uh, to, total twenty minutes for public commentary. Um, you were you asked to speak ten minutes later on. I'll put it in the yeah, LNC in, in the in the appropriate slot. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Harlow's. Pardon? We, have four we do have a quorum. We're, we are starting. Um, yes. What I'd like to speak to is the appointment of my seat. Hey, we need to be able to hear the uh, speakers in the room. Could you come over here and speak yeah. into the computer so that they can hear you on the Zoom call as well? My seat actually has four minutes for the appointments to the Constitutional Bylaws Committee. Uh, I don't know whether he's been appointed by El Paso County or not. If not, I would very strongly encourage the board to consider him for the Constitution and Bylaws Committee. Um, not only is he probably the most competent person in the state for this, he's already done the work for the combination of the Constitution and Bylaws to bring them together into one document. Hundreds and hundreds of hours have been put forth, and it was very, very well done. I read it. I advocated for it. Unfortunately, not only was he not appointed by the state party last year, but his appointment was removed by El Paso County because of some nefarious action, in my opinion. I would encourage the board of Colorado to very strongly consider his appointment to the Constitution and Bylaws Committee. He will reduce, if he were to be appointed, 
the amount of work that the CMB committee would be required to do would be lessened by tenfold. So I would encourage everybody to consider that very strongly. Thank you, Mr. Harlows. Uh, we have Laurel. Laurel, right, Weimer, uh, she's running in one of the house districts. She wanted to say a few words. If you would come over to the to the computer so that you can speak. I know there's no libertarian in her race uh, and she's running it for house district. For house district 24. 24 against Monica. Against Monica Duran, correct, right. Yeah, I'm the Republican nominee. So thank you for letting me come out tonight and speak to you. Um, yeah, there is no um, libertarian candidate in that race. Um, I want to shout out kudos, though, to two of your candidates. Um, I think it's Amara. Am I saying her name right? Um, she's running for a house district up north. I'm not sure what district. And of course, Margo. Um, they're both fantastic candidates. And Margo and I have become friends. I was very impressed with um, some stuff that Amara said last week at a Zoom call that I was on. Um, but um, I just wanted to take a minute to speak with you because um, this race is vital that we take this seat out of the control of the Democrats in Denver. Um, Monica Duran, if any of you have been following what's going on during this COVID chaos situation, she's been labeled one of the cruel 17 because she voted against, and it was a not a, partisan, a bipartisan vote on a bill that went through the house during COVID, which was asking to allow a loved one to be in a hospital environment when a loved one was sick and or dying with or without COVID. And Monica Duran is one of 17 Democratic candidates that voted against that and said that no, she would not allow a loved one to be with their loved one in a hospital environment during COVID, whether they had COVID or did not have COVID. And I think oh that's gosh. simply cruel. And so her and, and 16 other candidates have been labeled the cruel 17. Um, she also is in um, implemented uh, the red flag bill. She supports that wholly and completely. And as a Republican candidate, I support the right to keep and bear arms. Um, I think it's a vital part of our constitutional basis. Um, what happened this weekend was a severely unfortunate incident. And um, we were there, like I said, I was, I was being interviewed at the time. We were able to overhear some pieces of that situation that was happening behind us. And there's no reason for deadly force when someone has a can of mace in their hand. There's just no no reason for that. Right. And so um, I want to protect the Second Amendment. Um, I want all of us in Colorado to be able to go back to work. Um, I believe that COVID is real. I'm not saying that it's not. But our economy is real, too. And our people are suffering. And our kids cannot go to school. And our people cannot go to work. I am losing my job this week due to COVID shutdown because we cannot survive any longer. We've been in business six years. And we are having to shut down our business because we cannot survive. And I know that there are many, many people that are in that situation and our economy needs to be put back to work. Um, so I don't wanna take up a lot of your time tonight. I just wanted to introduce myself. I really would appreciate your support. I'm Golden, Edgewater, Wheat Ridge um, on the Western side of the city. Um, you guys don't have a libertarian to vote for. So please vote for Laurel for HD 24 on that Republican slot. It would really mean a lot. Thank you for coming. Thank you. And Laurel, if I may, how do you spell your last name? It's I M as in Mary E R. Jesus. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Laurel, for, for coming and for trying to get the economy open. You know, I cannot endorse you as right, a libertarian. I um, you don't have to endorse me. You can just but I can allow you to speak for three yes, minutes. And, and, I appreciate it very much. and that's. Um, we, we do appreciate you coming and trying to keep the, you know, as, as, as you know, I started the open Colorado movement right. and yeah. it was libertarians that, that started this and then Republicans it's, and it's some so Democrats un, joined us. Shutdowns are so wholly and completely unconstitutional violation of our 14th amendment, equal treatment, equal and fair treatment under the law. And they're picking and choosing what businesses they believe work yeah. behind their whatever they got going on with right. the unions and everything else. Thank you very much, Laurel. Um, Anybody else? Blake, did you have something to say? Well, I really didn't come. Uh, can everybody at home hear me? I have a loud voice, so I won't come over unless I need to. Can you hear him, uh, Mike? Uh, no, barely. I, can't I can hear barely hear you, Blake. You know me, I yell a lot. So, well, we know you yell. To speak, but based on what we talked about at the opening of the meeting, we have this divisiveness within the community. 
we need to, if you like rank choice voting, if you like approval voting, we need to get off this cross of the single vote because that creates polarization. And we see the representation <coughs> run down in the street because of polarization. Please, if you're a candidate, mention alternative voting methods, ranking, rating, approval voting, star voting, whatever is your flavor, mention that. We've got to get away from this plurality crap. If you don't know what I'm talking about, please talk. Thank you, Blake. Um, is Did Frank? Yes, ma'am. Frank, go ahead. <clears throat> this is Frank Atwood. I'm your liaison to the center-right coalition. Also happens with Blake to be a part of the approval voting party, but wanted to report on this morning's uh, center right coalition meeting. Uh, they discussed the Western Conservative Summit, which was held vir um, virtually with um, quite a number of people checking into it. They are also um, concerned about Cory Gardner and um, uh, Lauren uh, Bigot on the uh, Western Slope and uh, uh, concern about um, uh, yesterday's uh, death. And that's about it of a um, public nature. Call me if you're interested in further details. Thank you. No, you can vote for Frank on your ballot. That's true. He's uh, one of the approval voting candidate. Thank you. Both of them. Um, anybody else for public commentary? If I have, uh, if without objection from the board, I would like to have the LNC report go before the affiliates report to allow more time for all the affiliates to be here. Uh, inquiry, Madam Chairman. Yes, sir. Uh, Vice Chair Mulder speaking. Um, how long is this report? It's 10 minutes. Thank you. Or up to 10 minutes, it might be less. Madam Secretary, are you ready for us? All right, and I'm glad that actually it could get delayed a week because I have something that I had to keep under wraps for a month that I couldn't talk about, but I can talk about today. So yeah, secrets. But we first, need her to be in front of a microphone. Oh, I'm right here, sorry. Take, usually, take my seat. I'm usually loud. <laughs> I said, I, I've got some beans I can spill with something that's been under wraps for a month. So I'm kind of glad this got delayed a month. But first I wanted to give an update on the meeting that happened in September. Just some brief things that happened. If anyone has any questions, um, I can expl explicate. Um, the, I, I would say the, the most Im important thing that happened and this might not be considered that important. So it goes to show what a congenial meeting we had. We had more without objection votes than I've ever seen on the LNC. But the uh, the uh, the porcupine has now been adopted officially by the party as one of our symbols, um, not as a mascot, though that's the word people are using. We don't need a mascot. We have the chicken, I suppose. But in use cases where it would be traditional for the donkey or the elephant to be used, the Libertarian Party has officially adopted that in those use cases, we would be using the porcupine. So whatever you would call that use. Um, and I think it's a uh, high time actually that we did that because if we don't, the media will pick one for us and it'll probably be not something we'd particularly care for. Um, and uh, unofficially, the porcupine's name is George Quillies. And George Phillies was happy about that. He didn't take that. <laughs> he didn't take that as, as an insult. Um, the other things that had happened, the, the chair set up some advisory committees kind of as a proof of concept. They might become permanent um, in order to try to diversify power a little bit. As you know, um, former Chair Sarwark really ran the party more in a strong chair model where he held things very tight to his chest. Some people prefer that model. I, I didn't. Um, Mr. Bishop Henchman doesn't intend to run things that way. And he has set up certain advisory committees, I think is a step in the right um, direction. We've populated certain committees. And um, 
updated a lot of records for the new uh, Roberts Rules of Order, which anyone can ask me about the changes in it, they're, they're not that significant. And that is really basically it for the LNC meeting. Um, we do now have monthly e-meetings, which is another big change, which everyone was resistant to before. So I'm, I'm glad that we did that. Our next meeting will be our budget meeting in December in California. Riverside in Riverside, California. They are planning for Denver, which you probably already know about. I think they've been talking with Michelle because it will be at, there at the Pogue and Goldbrand's and residents in August ish of next year. They're going to have the 50th anniversary party celebration. I heard it was in Golden. No, it's supposed to be at their residence. That's the last I heard. Well, it's not okay, my, okay. it's not my, uh, not my yub. Um, but I'm just relaying what was said at the meeting. So there will be something here in Colorado in conjunction with an LNC meeting at that time. Now, what I've had to keep under wraps um, is something that probably the chair estimates a 5% chance of succeeding, but 5% is better than zero, is there's been an independent group of Libertarian Party donors who have formed their own organization called the Committee for American Debate and a lot of money has poured into it. The website is americandebatecommittee.live. Um, and what they've done is they've gotten an influential group of people together that are planning on hosting a presidential debate on October 29th, which is the date that President Trump said he wanted a live debate because he's refusing allegedly to participate in the virtual debate. So we are providing the forum um, there is an honored military veteran, which some people may have heard of, a lady um, by the name of Pritchard, who runs the Pritchard um, Military Museum. She's the one who's going to be hosting it. John Quinones of ABC has agreed to be the moderator. Um, C-SPAN has agreed to televise it. Some other networks might be interested. A bunch of big name people are having op-eds that will be hitting the newspapers over the next week, including the Wall Street Journal. Uh, Washington Post, some of them have already started hitting. So you'll start to see this. It's not coordinated by the Libertarian Party. It happens to be some Libertarians, but it's very much multi-partisan. Uh, it's, uh, they've been speaking with us because obviously they wanted to get our candidate on board. So far, we have not gotten agreement from um, President Trump or Biden. If we get one of them there, we'll get both of them. And who knows what will happen? That would be great if they would so this is the biggest thing that has happened in a while. There's a good deal of money and publicity being poured into this, particularly since the Commission on Presidential Debates has just proven that they're a little bit more flexible than they claim to be when it suits them. Um, the, the one thing that the, the LP has a little bit of a, a disagreement with this particular committee on, but again, it's not our committee, is their debate criteria is you need to be on the ballot in all 50 states, which we qualify for, which is great for us. But our argument has always been on the ballot in enough states to get enough electoral college votes, which is a little bit different. It's a distinction without a difference this time but it, there is a principle involved there because it's very easy to get thrown off the ballot in one state and that shouldn't disqualify anybody because um, even the Republicans and Democrats have almost gotten thrown off the ballots in one state by some of the ballot access laws that are so convoluted. So um, I would go to that website, Can be on the lookout, the, place, the website. Um, it is American Debate Committee. Um, it is a nonprofit, donations to them are tax deductible. It is nonpartisan. Um, so it's an exciting development. We'll see if it happens. If any of you have connections to any movers or shakers, encourage them to write an op-ed in support. I have something yeah. for you. Um, I've been in contact in the past 48 hours with a very influential reporter from the New York Times. Mm -hmm. um, his name is Brian Peitsch, I think. Um, I'm not sure how his last name is, but I can get you in touch with Brian and I can probably get you in the New York Times in the next 48 hours. I also would like to offer a suggestion. A lot of Republicans are asking Senator Gardner to sit out of the debate tomorrow night because Nine News is hosting. Would the commission be willing to offer to host Cory Gardner 
much. And John Hickenlooper as for long a debate. As they allow Ramon Doan in it too. That that <laughs> is again since it's not ran by the us. LP. Yeah. Um, if if you me. get me your contact information, they have set up a, a liaison with the LP, obviously, and I can put you in touch with her, which is Tara DeSisto at our headquarters. So anything like that, yes, we we need to get influential people on board with getting this debate out there because right now the American people have only seen a shit show to be put it kindly. And we need to see a real debate with the presidential candidates. So hopefully we can see that on October 29th. So that's been a big development I've had to keep mom about for the for the past month because the donors were not yet fully committed. So I didn't entertain any questions, otherwise I'm I'm done. This is great news. Thank it's fantastic news. So they've reached out to President Trump in this regard yet? Have they, um, they have, from what I understand. And also to um, Mr. Biden, they have they have contacts with with the campaigns. Um, from what I understand, there's been no definitive answer yet from from President Trump on this. Um, they're going to be tweeting at him as well, since that seems to be the best way. And we'll probably learn his answer on Twitter. We have very yes. direct. So yeah, okay, great. We will help run that up the flagpole as high as we can because we be think best. that's a fantastic idea. Yeah, and honestly, you know, if I were obviously, you know, I'm a libertarian. I'm not out to support it. If I like thinking, I like thinking like an operative for both sides. And if I were um, Mr. Trump, I would be thinking I need this because honestly, that last debate did not do him well. Get Joe Rogan to moderate. Moderate, he'll be there. Um, <laughs> I, think, I think it was offered to him initially, Thank and you. he turned it down. Um, so yeah, I, I do think President Trump needs this. Yes. Are there any other questions Great. for Thank the you. Ellen's? I have one. There's a question from uh, from our secretary. Yes. Hey, um, Karen Ann. Who else qualified other than the Libertarians and the uh, two old parties? It's, it, that's it. Nobody else is on the on the ballot in all 50 states. And I also don't think, though I can't, I'm not 100% sure of this, I don't think the Greens have enough, even for our criteria, our personal criteria, of enough electoral college votes. Though again, okay. we're not running this, and the criteria set by this outside organization is on the ballot in all 50 states. So the ones that qualify is the LP and the, the Republicans and Democrats. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Any further questions? Thank you, Madam Secretary. Let's proceed with the affiliates of Arapahoe County. All right, can everyone hear me? We can hear you. Perfect. Eric Mulder, Chair of the Libertarian Party of Arapahoe County speaking. We are pleased to announce that this coming Sunday at Water's Edge Winery and Bistro, we will be hosting a Rapa Happy Hour from the hours of 5 to 7 p.m. And we are also very proud to announce that the Libertarian Party's own Ramon Doan is going to be there speaking to us to help us get out the vote. We will also be discussing what's going to be on your ballot in Arapahoe County, which will not only include statewide measures, but a couple of city measures. Spoiler in advance, vote no, we don't need it, we can't afford it. Thank you, Mr. Mulder. Boulder, is Bo here or anybody from Boulder? No? Chafee? Delta. Denver, Mr. Fury. The yeah, Libertarian Party of Denver will be holding their next meeting next Tuesday, October 20th at 6.30 p.m. at the dive-in. And we will be having Ramon Doan, the U.S. Senate candidate, will be speaking. Dive-in? Yep. Back to the dive-in. Back dive -in. to the dive-in. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, Douglas County, if you would come over here, Wayne, so that everybody can hear you. Douglas County has had a very active last month. Uh, we had two sign wavings. We had the drive along. Uh, we did a road cleanup. We've had uh, uh, the last couple of meetings have been very good with decent participation considering the restrictions. And uh, overall, it's been very good for us. Good month. Didn't you have a candidate thing on Saturday last week with well, we did in, a, in addition, Victoria. but that wasn't that really wasn't sponsored by us. That was put on by you. 
and it was wonderful. We had Victoria Reynolds at the Purgatory uh, Wine Cellar in Castle Rock. Um, a little bit before that, just a few days before that, we had a, a gathering at the Purgatory Wine Cellars in Parker with both Ramon and Victoria. And it was a fundraiser for both. I hope you did well. I never saw the numbers, but um, I, I hope you both generated enough uh, income to make it worth your while. I generated enough income to send out 2,000 layers. Nice. So, yeah. so Douglas County has been busy. <laughs> yes, thank you. And the next meeting is the first Thursday in uh, November, right? Right after the election. Right after the election. Albert, El Paso. Go ahead. Can you hear me? Well, they can. I yeah, we can hear you. Okay. okay. Uh, Go ahead. If there's no without uh, objection from the board. Beatrice Sutton as our appointment to the Constitution and Bylaws. Thank you. Okay, I'm John Jersman with the Libertarian Party of El Paso County. Uh, we're having a <clears throat> candidates and issues forum this Thursday at the uh, the Hotel Elegante, which is where we had our uh, state convention two years ago. Uh, there are like 17, I believe, 17 speakers that are going to be there, plus uh, 15 or 16 candidates. <clears throat> It's going to start at six and run till nine. Um, and I just saw from Judy Darcy that uh, Senate President Bill Cadman is going to speak. So she's she's still working on getting more people to show up. I think her goal is like twenty or twenty-one, something like that. Yeah. So everyone is welcome. Uh, you don't have to be from El Paso County. Because, well, for one thing, we we're going to have a couple of candidates for Congressional Congression District 5 speaking. And that's a, that covers a lot of territory. So and I think that's, I think all the invitations went out to every Libertarian in Congressional, Congressional District 5. Awesome. Right? Very cool. good. That's... Oh wait, I'm muted. Very good. <laughs> okay, that's it for me. Jefferson? Do we have somebody from Jefferson County? Well, from the Libertarian Party of <laughs> Jefferson County, I don't see them here. Isn't I know they here? were hosting something in. Oh, there's a. Uh... Hi. Balding, do you have something from Jefferson County? Um, I thought I saw Ross. There. Unmute yourself. I believe I'm unmuted. You are. Okay. Um, um. I take it that Ross is not there? No, Ross is not here. Um, okay. So we did a trash pickup over the weekend, as Victoria mentioned, um, and uh, Wayne Harlow's came all the way from Douglas County to help us, so we appreciate that. Um, also, uh, we've had several successful meetings, but the big thing was we had a debate with a Democrat and a cardboard cutout of a Republican at uh, Clement Park, and we had 65 people show up. It was a great show. So Mar Margo did a great job of representing the Libertarian Party. Oh, yay. All right, let's go back to Mesa. I don't see Mesa. Pueblo and Otero. John Pickerel. Can you hear me? Yep, I can hear you. Okay. Uh, if you remember last month, uh, uh, Bruce Griffin uh, notified us that the uh, Pueblo Latino Chamber of Commerce was uh, allowing us to do videos for our candidates. And uh, Ramon Doan and I both participated in that. Uh, unfortunately, John and Kyle did not. Uh, we're the three libertarians on the ballot in Pueblo County. And I thought I thought that the video videos came out uh, really well. 
uh, the, the Latino chamber was, was pretty gracious. And, and it's one of those rare moments where we have equal airtime. Uh, unfortunately, the, the uh, public chief to the newspaper uh, did not invite uh, either Ramon or I to participate in the debates. So we were left out of that. Uh, we were completely ignored in the write-up as if the Libertarian Party did not exist. I'm sure we're all used to that, but uh, unfortunately, we, were, we weren't able to crack into that. Um, we're continuing to hold uh, in-person meetings uh, at the uh, Senate Bar and Grill, downtown Pueblo. Last month, we hosted Ramon Doan. Uh, this month, uh, we, are, uh, we should have a uh, voter guide, Libertarian voter guide, uh, published in the Pueblo Chieftain and the Pueblo West View. Um, I was hoping to get those in this Sunday, but uh, I was just informed that uh, their Sunday spread is full, so we're going to have to wait till the following Sunday. So unfortunately, it's not going to have as much impact as we want, but we are going to get our uh, voter guide published. That's all I have. Uh, question for the Pueblo affiliate. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Uh, Vice Chair Eric Mulder speaking. Uh, what's the date and time for your next meeting? Um, I don't have my calendar in front of me. It's always the third Tuesday of the month. Um, so let's see, doing a little bit of math here. Tomorrow's the 13th, so it'll be the 20th. The 20th. Perfect, and what time does that start usually? It's always uh, 6.30. Uh, we have uh, kind of cocktail half hour from 6.30 to 7. And then the program starts at 7. Beautiful. That's all I had. Thank Thanks. you very much, Mr. Uh, Pickerel and Mr. Vice Chair. Um, looks like that is all the affiliates. Has everyone read the minutes from last month? Okay, and is there any objection to approving the minutes as is? Does everybody unmute it so that I know that there's no objections? No objection. No objections, okay, wonderful. So the minutes are approved. Officer reports, Chairman, I did not submit a written report, um, but I have been in several different affiliates this um, month. I am also running a campaign for Douglas County Commissioner for myself. So that's a full-time job in and of itself. And we did have a few fires to put out that were, uh, that happened. I, um, that's about it. Um, Vice Chair. Only thing I have to add to my report, Vice Chair Mulder speaking, putting on my Vice Chair hat. I do have confirmation that we will be receiving a limited supply of Joe Jorgensen bumper stickers. They say Colorado for Jorgensen and they are slated to arrive sometime around Wednesday. I will be receiving those. And if you would like some, I will have about 40 that I can distribute to anybody as I'm able to. Thank you, Mr. And that's all I have to add, sorry. Oh, thank you, Mr. Vice Chair Treasurer. Mm, let me do this before you put that on. Go ahead. Okay, I don't believe I have anything to add to my report that I submitted. Okay. Campaigns. Mr. Griffith. Uh, my report went in late, but it is there. Um, so I'll summarize what I, what I put down. So um, at this point, ballots have been mailed. So they went out tonight, something like Friday. Um, people have started receiving. You can't ballots. hear them, Victoria. Uh, we got ours on Saturday. Um, so candidates are fixed. Absolutely. <laughs> Um, so moving on from there, um, over the last month, uh, we've been getting a lot of emails that have been coming into the state party about candidates that have no contact information at all published anywhere. Um, and so as a uh, consequence of that, I took the initiative to create a forwarding email address for every candidate in the state. Um, and the interesting thing about that is, is I, I get 
after all the bounces when somebody somebody emails one of those addresses. addresses are posted on the libertarian website um, and so that's actually been a very successful thing um, the, the cost to it I, I donated it to the party I created a domain created the, the email addresses it was about thirty dollars per year so. thank you mr. Griffith thank you very much, thank you very much. outreach uh, hey, everyone. Um, the only thing I have to add is something that's um, like an idea I threw out there a little while ago, but it kind of got some traction in the last two days. Sort of starting a, a, uh, some sort of networking process to kind of connect um, libertarians with libertarian business owners and service providers to kind of keep everything uh or kind of get things sort of in-house and build a community a little bit. Um, I believe Victoria had a good idea of kind of using it, you know, we could uh, allow people to advertise in our mailer. Um, it's just a way for people to, you know, uh, give back to, I guess, the libertarian community. Um, so if you have a business, if you're interested or have any ideas, um, shoot me an email um, and we can talk about it. Uh, that's all I have. Yep. Go ahead and say it so that everybody can hear you on YouTube and, and everybody watching at home. Mark, what's your email? I think you're muted. It is outreach at lpcolorado.org. Um, Mark, are you yep, there? Sorry about that. Yeah, sorry. Couldn't get off mute. <laughs> sorry about that. So they can reach you at... Um, uh, yes, it's um. Hold on, let me find it. It's outreach director at lpcolorado.org. Thank you very much, uh, yep. Steve. Are you there, affiliates? Yes. Uh, nothing to add to my report. Thank you very much, legislative Matt Hess. <clears throat> um. The only things to really report right now are the Colorado Blue Book has been delivered to most Colorado voters. The fall 2020 ballots are uh, heading out. If you haven't already received it, you should be receiving in the next few days. Uh, depending on your county and whatnot, uh, some might be a week delayed or so. Uh, most are on the same schedule. And this is my last report as legislative director. For personal and secret reasons, I am resigning from my position. I cannot continue to split my time right now between this obligation and the others I currently have. Something's got to give, and after some much-needed reflection and downtime, I believe it's best for the party if I step out of this role for now. I'm disappointed that I must do this, but I believe it's to be for the best. Thank you for... Um... For all that all that you did do, which was uh, going through all the issues and everything, and create, creating the guide from the libertarian standpoint, thank you very much for for everything. It'll be I I am not I'm not going to accept your resignation. I'm sorry, you may not resign. <laughs> oh wait, I, I, I'm gonna I have that's. It's lp.org. Uh, it's on the website. I think so many people asking about a lot of these initiatives and I'd like to give another viewpoint. Right. There's some really convoluted stuff there. Communications, Mr. Lalment. Uh, yes. Um, we got stuff going up on uh, Instagram now. That's really good. Um, got a volunteer working on that, so doing really good. Is that the young lady that I uh, introduced you? Did she help us? Yes, Ella. Ella. Yep. She's amazing. She yep. is amazing. Brilliant, and she's 17. Like, super brilliant. <sighs> Just, uh, you know, she's not able to vote yet, but she's involved politically, and she is an election judge. And she is, uh, you know, just amazing. I just, it's, it's really cool. Anything else? Sorry. 
That's that's it. Secretary. Uh, okay, a couple things. Nothing to add to my report, but um, uh, what campaigns, uh, Bruce Griffith, are you still on? Yep. Okay, so I, I saw in your report, you said there's one third of our candidates are unreachable. Is it true we have no way to contact them? Well, we have private emails. So those do work? Yes. Well, okay. they don't bounce. <laughs> okay, all right. Um, and then uh, what outreach, um, you s were soliciting people to list their businesses uh, and David might know the answer to this, but I thought on our website, we had a listing of various libertarian businesses or I, I, one time we did a link to, um, so, so if you needed a plumber, you could pull up a libertarian plumber in your area. Dave, do you know if that's still there? David Atkin, do we have any listing of libertarian businesses on our website? I don't think so. I know we used to. That's the question. Are there a list of libertarian businesses listed in our website or a link to them? Libertarian what? Businesses. No. No, there is not at this time. Yeah, well, maybe that solves Mark's uh, um, initiative is to just add that. We used to have a page up there with those, so. Thank you. Uh, Thank you, Mr. Then, uh, the other thing is, did we skip membership? Oh, yeah, I sure did. Membership, go ahead. Thanks. Uh, nothing added by report. OK, Thanks. except I noticed in your report, it had the deadline for the spring newsletter as October 9th. Seems somewhat aggressive. Yes. Um, and I, for those of you that did submit content, I really appreciate it. Um, uh, it. It would be great if we could get something from every affiliate and every director, even if it's just one or two sentences, because I think a lot of people don't know what the board does. Uh, I think even more importantly, everyone out in, in uh, the different counties would love to know what their affiliates are doing. Uh, not just, hey, we're meeting at this time, but this is what we're actively doing. The things we've just talked about at this meeting, um, I think that that would go a long way in the newsletter. So I'm gonna make one more plug on that. Thank you, Mr. Pickerel. Um, fundraising is again absent and there was no report again. This is the second or third month? Third, I think. Mr. Atkin. I don't know um, how long he's been absent, but at least two months, I think, which is, I okay. believe if you're absent for two months, um, your position is automatically vacant. Is that correct? That is correct. He was here in August, so he was absent for September. According to the bylaws. So now we have two vacancies, fundraising and legislative. We need to advertise those and hopefully we'll get them filled in the next 30 days or so. Um, Madam Chairman, um, we also have some convention deadlines that are either past due or fast approaching and those need to be dealt with by the fundraising director. For next year? Yes. Okay. Let's uh, figure those out and get them out there because <laughs> now it's on me. Uh, we did um, request, okay, standing committees, technology. Um, Mike, is there anything from you? Uh, I have nothing. Nothing to add. Uh, yes, Mr. Harlow. I'm aware. Thank you very much. You could do that. I could delegate those those um, things that are now under me until we find a, a person to do it. Um, database website. Anything to report? Nothing to add. Nothing to add. 
Welcome committee, Mr. Um, Lantoni. I know I saw him in here. Muted. Sorry, I forgot how to unmute myself. Um, I don't really have anything to report. Uh, I'm still doing the same thing. I'm trying to uh, make contact with uh, the new people that Prairie Dog uh, from the website, either the national or the state websites. And I uh, had a very nice conversation with a fellow who spends half of his time in Hawaii and half of his time in Route County uh, today. And uh, I'm going to be following up with him again shortly. So uh, I guess over the past few days, I've probably averaged uh, one phone conversation with a new person each time. Mr. Spalding has his hand up. Uh, I just wanted to thank Mark for routing volunteers over to Jeffco. We've been able to invite the, several of them to our various events, and it's really useful having that stream coming to us. Thank yes, you. I really appreciate that, Mark. Thank you so much. Um, campaigns committee, I guess you already reported as campaigns. Now for the bylaw. <laughs> Unfinished business and new business. I did not put the bylaws and the platform committee on today's agenda, even though we were hoping to have um, this done this month. We did have the applications, the request for applications go out, but we have only received five applications so far and a letter of intent. We need more than that. And I don't have all of the, the nominations from all of the affiliates. So I would like to see if we can do that on the next uh, board meeting and get some people to apply for the platform committee as well as the bylaws committee. The applications we have received for the bylaws committee are Betty Rose Ryan, Joe Johnson, Scott Helker, Michelle Pogue, Karen Ann Harlows, and Wayne Harlows. And, and, and the letter of intent we used to which you spoke before. But uh, it is in the, you know, we've requested that people actually apply. So those are the, the, the applications we received were Karen Ann, Wayne Harlows, Michelle Pogue, Betty Rose Ryan, Scott Helker, and Joe Johnson. And Ms. Harlows was appointed to the platform committee by her, um, by her uh, affiliate. We have received no applications uh, for the platform committee other than Ms. Harlos's and she um, withdrew hers after receiving the, the appointment from the committee. So I'd like to do that next board meeting if that's okay. So we can extend the time for people to actually apply for the different committees and for the affiliates to, to um, appoint someone. Unless there's an objection. Any objections? I don't hear any. Is anybody speaking uh, on Zoom? I don't see anybody, no raise hands, no objections. Uh, without objections, that's all we have. So is there a second? Excuse me. Second. Any objections? Meetings adjourned. Thank you very much. Thank you. An hour. If that's long for yeah, you, you got it made. You guys are in the money. Yeah, I might totally switch parties. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Mark, my daughter, you still on the horn?